Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I thought I'd take you out to the garage with me and show you how I clean my chainsaw after a day of use. I do this after every day of use out on the land. Maybe it's overkill, maybe not, but uh, in any case, this is how I uh, do a daily cleaning on my steel MS-170. This is what I'm going to be using to clean my chainsaw. I like to start with an old paintbrush to brush off the big chunks. Next I move on to compressed air to get into all the little nooks and crannies. When you're using compressed air, very important to always wear your safety glasses. Got my scrunch to remove the cover so I can get inside and clean out the inside. I also like to use this part to scrape off um, some of the bigger chunks of, of goop that are stuck inside there. Got a pair of gloves. You can use your chainsaw gloves. These are gardening gloves with a pair of um, mechanic uh, nitrile gloves over the top. It seemed to work fine. And I also like to have a roll of shop towels on hand just to give a final wipe down all the parts before I reassemble my saw. The first thing I like to do is brush off all of the bigger chunks of sawdust and chain oil using my old paintbrush. Um, so I'll first do that on the whole saw. Next I'll remove the two nuts that are holding this bracket cover in place. You want to be careful with these. They come all the way off so you just want to be sure you put them somewhere safe and don't lose them. The amount of gunk that piles up in here is somewhat shocking. This is mostly a mix of sawdust, chain oil, and tree sap, so it can have a really gummy and sticky consistency. Don't worry, that's what we're here to take care of. At this stage, the first thing I like to do is always to brush off the loose bits with my old paintbrush, so I'll start usually on the inside of the cover. For the more stubborn bits, I like to use the screwdriver part of the scrunch to just scrape them out and make sure I get the, as much as I can off in this stage as possible. Now if we come around to the front of the saw, you'll notice on this model, the tensioning screw is right here. So we're going to need to turn that counterclockwise to loosen the bar and chain. You'll notice here, just beneath the two studs, there's a bit of a metal peg kind of peeking out through a hole in the bar. That is the tensioning peg, which moves left or right to control chain tension. Once there's enough slack in the chain, you should be able to remove the whole bar and chain quite easily. Make sure to wear gloves for this next part, but you should now be able to remove the chain from the bar. Remember to be careful when you're doing this or else you could end up like I was the first time I handled the chain. And do one knot and I make two more. Oh my god! <laughs> How is it worse? How is it worse? Come on. I like to hang my chain on the handle of my garbage bin. That way it won't get tangled or misplaced. We're going to be cleaning the bar with some compressed air. You want to pay close attention to the groove where the chain fits into the bar, as well as the chain oil holes at the back end of the bar on either side. Always make sure to wear your safety glasses when using compressed air. I also like to blow a little compressed air onto the chain itself, just to clean it up a bit of old oil and sawdust that could be stuck to it. And I always make sure to hang the chain back up on the handle so it doesn't get tangled. Next I use compressed air on the whole saw itself. Um, this can be a bit time consuming. There are a lot of small nooks and crannies to get into and I like to be thorough. When using compressed air for this, there's a lot of sawdust and bar oil that's going to be flying around. So I like to do it right over the garbage can to make sure that most of it ends up there. I also use compressed air on the inside of the cover and that's got a uh, it actually has a lot of very small little nooks, so it can take a little while to get it all the way clean.
As a final step before I put everything back together, I like to wipe everything down with a, a blue shop towel just to make sure I get all the, the remaining oil off. Um, so I like to take my time with this step, really make sure that I've gotten as much off as I can. When I'm wiping down the main saw body, I like to pay particular attention to the oil outlet channel, um, which is where the oil goes from the saw and into the bar. So you want to be sure that's clear so that the oil can travel freely and make sure to lubricate the chain on the bar. So that's located right here. So you want to make sure that that is shiny before you reassemble your saw. I also like to make sure that the chain brake mechanism is clear of gunk as well. You can see here when the chain brake is on, this little band tightens around the drum. So you want to make sure there's nothing accumulated in there. Next, we're going to reassemble the saw. So the first thing I do before I do that is make sure I know which way the chain goes on the bar. So you, if you want, if you're just starting out, you can use the diagram that's conveniently located on the bar. And make sure your chain lines up properly with that. The way I do this is to carefully grab the chain and place it over the bar nose, and making sure that the little, the little tongs are in the groove properly as much as I can all the way around. Keeping some tension on the chain so it stays on the bar properly. I'm going to head over to the saw and put this back together. I like for the saw to be on its side for this next part. I just find it easier for me to reassemble. But we're going to notice the two studs here as well as the peg from the tensioner slide. And you'll see how you can see here how the, the peg is connected to the tensioning screw on the front so that by tightening that it's going to pull the bar away and put tension into the chain. So we grab our bar and chain and letting gravity help we just place it over the studs and let the peg go into the locating hole and make sure that the chain is resting around the sprocket properly and then flip the whole thing over being careful that everything stays in place i always just keep a finger on the bar to make sure that it doesn't flap around while i'm tightening the tensioning screw and come unhooked from the from the peg um, so that usually is sufficient to keep everything in place until there's tension in the chain. Next, I tighten the tensioning screw until the chain is snug against the bottom of the bar. I like to keep the chain brake off for this so that I can pull the chain along the bar um, just to make sure everything is sit sitting in the right place and moving properly before I move on to the next step. You'll notice when I lift the bar nose there's still some sag in the chain. That is fine. I'm going to tension the chain properly once the cover is on. So put the cover on and tighten the nuts only lightly, just hand tight. Once you've done that, you're going to hold up the bar nose so you can see that there's still some sag in the chain here. And now we're going to tighten the tensioning screw until the chain is snug to the bottom while holding the bar nose up. And then, without letting go of the bar nose, I'm going to tighten the nuts on the cover properly. My main guide for tightening my chain is to tighten it until there's no more slack um, underneath the bar while I'm holding the nose up. Tighten the nuts, and then I should be able to pull the chain along the bar smoothly. And when I lift it, the little tongues do not come all the way out of the groove. So there you have it. Clean and tensioned and ready to go. Actually, I always sharpen my chain as well during this process, but that's a whole other video. So thanks for watching guys, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.